Now it's time to define the interesting traffic, the proxy access list. Let's have a look at the topology. We have a local network in our end that is 10.0.0.0 slash 24. And the remote protected network is 10.0.1.0 slash 24. That means that all traffic that comes from 10.0.0 that goes to 10.0.1 from our perspective should be encrypted and sent into the tunnel. And to do that, we need to configure an access list. So let's configure an access list. The command is access list, a name for the access list. In our case, we can use something like VPN traffic. And it should be an extended access list. And we should define which traffic to send in the tunnel. And everything that should be sent into the tunnel should be defined with a permit statement to say this traffic is interesting. And the actual definition of the traffic is IP. And it's good to remember that when we configure proxy access list for interesting traffic for IPsec VPN, we can not use ports and protocols. This access list does only support full IP. If we want to filter traffic in the tunnel from protocol level, we must do that in another way. We could use VPN filter to do that, but we cannot do that in the proxy access list. So for a access list that defines interesting traffic for a VPN tunnel, it should always be permit IP. It's important to remember, permit IP. The local subnet is 10.0.0.0 with a net mask of 255.255.255.0 and the remote network is 10.0.1.0 and the same mask, like that. So this defines the interesting traffic. The access list line looks like this. Access list VPN traffic permit IP 10.0.0.0 with a mask and to 10.0.1.0. So this is the source in the access list. The source is our local network, and this is the destination. It's their remote subnet. And if the interesting traffic are more than one subnet in either or both ends, we need to add more lines to the access list. But this is a simple configuration with only one subnet in each side, so we can have an access list for the interesting traffic with only one single line. Okay, let's combine all these parameters together in something called a crypto map. Let's configure a crypto map. The command is crypto map and the crypto map needs to have a name. Also here, this name is only local significant. We will use it in another place to apply it, but it's only a local name. So it does not have to match in both ends and it will never be sent outside of the firewall. It's only a local name. And after that, we need to have an entry number. And this is like the priority number for phase one. It's a number. The only important thing is the relation between the different numbers if you, have, if you have more than one. So here you can put any number. I use 10, it's just a number. And after that, you can add different parameters. And here we tie together different parts of the configuration. First of all, we do match to define the access list, match address and the access list name. VPN traffic, like that. After that, we use set and we use IKB1 transform set. And here I reference the previously created transform set with the name of my transform set. After that, I use the command set peer to reference the peer IP of the remote peer 10.182.168.201. Show run crypto map shows us the crypto map. And there should be at least these three parameters. They are mandatory and there can be more parameters, but they are optional. And these three are mandatory. So we reference the crypto access list. We reference the peer IP and the transform set. And by referencing the access list, the firewall knows when there comes traffic from our local 10.0.0 subnet that goes to the remote 10.0.1 subnet, it should be encrypted using these settings and sent to this peer. That's the whole purpose of the crypto map. 